everyone, and welcome to VTN Sunday as we celebrate Easter, Passover, Resurrection Sunday. When most people think of Easter, they think of fluffy cotton-tailed bunnies or baskets filled with eggs. As cute as those things are, they're not the reason behind the holiday and why we celebrate it. The significance of Easter goes much deeper and further than that. When Jesus died and rose again, He gave us assurance of eternal life for all that believe in Him. So stay tuned as we go through the story of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. And remembering, it is not about the bunny. Before we get into the Word today, I want you to join Jeannie as she sings a song written by John Houston, a very powerful song. Listen closely to the words as Jeannie sings, Rose Without a Thorn. Resurrection of my soul is in your hands, Lord. You have rolled away the stone that sealed my tomb. And you drove away the darkness that surrounded me. And released me from the chains of eternal doom. You release me from the chains of eternal doom. You set my spirit free upon a holy wind to soar the span of heaven's wondrous sky, to run among the stars and hear them singing glorious praises to the King.
Here's Pastor Caldwell with today's message. What a powerful song. Jesus was the rose without the thorn. Thank you for joining Jeannie and me on this Easter Sunday. I want to share with you for just a few moments about three things <clears throat> that you should know about Jesus's resurrection. And then I'll be back at the end to pray for you. So don't leave today. I want to be sure and pray for you wherever you are uh, today. First, let's go over to John's gospel, chapter 20. This is one of my favorite passages of scripture. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark. And, you know, standing here in front of the old city of uh, Jerusalem, uh, the sky probably looked a little bit like that uh, when Jesus was crucified, when he died and buried, uh, the city went dark, the skies went dark. And, uh, you know, you couldn't see anything because the death of the Son of God was taking place. And Jesus was getting ready to go into the heavenlies and put his blood on the mercy seat so we could all uh, participate in the resurrection. But here's Mary Magdalene. She has come uh, seeking the body of the Lord Jesus. And it was dark. She came to the sepulcher. She saw the stone taken away from the sepulcher, the grave. And she ran and she came to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved. That was John talking about himself. And he said, they've taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher and I don't know where they've laid him. Peter therefore went forth, that other disciple, which was John, and they came to the sepulcher. They ran both together. The other disciple did outrun Peter. I don't know why that's so important, but he wanted you to know. And he came first to the sepulcher. Stooping down, he saw the linen clothes lying there, but he did not go in. When Simon Peter came in, he went into the sepulcher and he saw the linen clothes lying there and the napkin that was about his head and not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then he went in also, that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed because Yet at that time, they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. That's what Easter is all about. It's a resurrection Sunday. It's the resurrection of the Lord. No other religion in the world has a resurrection day. No leader, spiritual leader in any other religion has ever been raised from the dead. All the leaders of other religions are dead, but Christianity has a leader, Jesus, that is not dead. He died, but he's not dead. He was raised. And that's what separates Christianity from every other religion in the world is the resurrection. That's what we're celebrating. But Mary stood without the sepulcher, weeping. She wept. She stopped, stooped down and looked in the sepulcher and she saw two angels in white, sitting one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said to her, Woman, why weepest thou? And she said, Because they've taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they've laid him. And when he had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know it was Jesus. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if you have borne him hence, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said unto her, Mary, she'd heard that voice before. And she turned unto him and said, Rabboni, who, which is to say, Master. And Jesus said, Touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my father and your father, to my God and your God. This is the foundation. This is the center point of the Christian faith is the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let me read also to you uh, from the scriptures, because I know a lot of people have thought and I've heard it taught that Jesus he really didn't want to go to the cross. He was, uh, he was grieving about it. Not so. The Bible says that Jesus uh, 
the, the joy that was set before him, and we'll read that in Hebrews in a minute. Uh, he went to the cross. He endured the cross. He, 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 in the Garden of Gethsemane, he didn't pray, if it be thy will. He said, Father, thy will be done, not mine. But listen to this in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. And let's go to uh, verse 2. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. Look at this, verse 3 to whom also Jesus showed himself alive after his passion. It was Jesus' passion. You remember the movie several years ago called The Passion of Christ? It was Jesus' passion. It was his joy to go to the cross. Even though he was beaten and striped and spit on and ridiculed and a crown of thorns on his head. And he carried his cross through the streets of Jerusalem. And even though he was humiliated, he did all that for you and for me. But according to the scriptures, that was his passion. He endured the cross. He despised the shame, but he did it willingly. He was joyful about it. He wasn't moping around, oh me, oh me. It said here that he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. You know, the Bible gives us references to uh, probably five, over 500 people saw Jesus after he was raised from the dead. It's also significant that Jesus told Mary, he said, Mary, don't touch me yet. I've not yet ascended to my father, to my father and your father. Now, the Jews did not know God as father. They knew him as Elohim. They knew him as Jehovah. They knew him, but they didn't know him as a father. And Jesus first announced this to Mary. I'm going to my father and your father. They didn't know. They knew Abraham as, God, as father, but they didn't know God as father. So this was a significant uh, result of uh, the resurrection. Now, let's go over to Hebrews and let's read in chapter 12 uh, about how Jesus, with the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. That's a powerful statement. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Wow. Jesus, <laughs> for the joy that was set before him and the passion that he had to show himself alive. Now, why did Jesus tell Mary, don't touch me until I've ascended to the Father? Because and you can find all this in the book of Hebrews, because this, this was necessary for Jesus to put his blood on the mercy seat. You see, Jesus was uh, the Passover lamb. He met all the requirements of the Passover lamb in the Old Testament. And he was the Passover lamb uh, from the foundation of the world. And he had to go into the Holy of Holies the real Holy of Holies, the true Holy of Holies in heaven, not the Holy of Holies that was in Moses' day, in Moses' tabernacle, but he went into the real Holy of Holies and he placed his blood on the mercy seat. The Holy Spirit, it says, offered his blood as a sacrifice unto God for man's sinfulness. And Jesus' blood co covered and remitted our sins uh, death came through Adam, but life came through Jesus Christ. So Jesus told Mary, Mary, don't touch me yet. I have not yet ascended to the Father. And it was important that he put his blood on that mercy seat uh, to remit man's sinfulness. And that he did. And he endured the cross and despised the shame, but he did all of this for us 
And he did this joyfully. It was his passion to show himself alive. Hallelujah. And that's why we sing the songs. He's alive. He's alive. All of the resurrection songs uh, uh, concerning Easter, concerning resurrection day, the Passover. This is the power of Easter. And Easter, again, I say unto you, not to be critical or judgmental, to spoil anybody's <laughs> Easter, but it's not about bunnies. It's not about eggs. That's all developed to kind of distract people from the real meaning. It's not about the bunny. It's about Jesus. And that's what we want to show you today. Now, let's go over to Romans chapter 6. And we see a revelation of our identification with Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. Romans chapter 6, and let's start with verse 4. Therefore, we are buried uh, with faith. We, uh, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Now, how is this resurrection going to benefit us? The three things that you need to know about Jesus' resurrection. Number one, Jesus was raised from the dead. That's the foundation of the gospel. Jesus was crucified. He was buried and he was raised. If Jesus wasn't raised, neither will we be. If Jesus wasn't raised from the dead, then sin still has a hold on the human race. But we're going to see that you can be freed from your sin because of Jesus' resurrection. Number two, it was Jesus' passion uh, to be raised from the dead and to show himself alive. And number three, it was his joy to go to the cross. Think about this now as you celebrate <laughs> Easter and hopefully you will celebrate the resurrection. So let's go back to Romans chapter 6 and verse 5. For we've all been planted together in the likeness of his death. The Bible teaches that when Jesus was crucified, we were crucified with him. That's our identification. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Jesus was raised from the dead. We're going to be raised from the dead. We're raised first spiritually. Then after our body dies, uh, we will be raised physically. Uh, for We've been planted together in the likeness of his death. We'll be planted in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Uh, resurrection Day. To celebrate Easter, you really ought to have communion. You really ought to uh, do this in remembrance of him. Uh, the Passover lamb. You, you really should take the communion emblems to celebrate and to acknowledge that because of Jesus' blood, your sins have been remitted. And because of the crucifixion of his body, your body has been healed. So take advantage of that today. Thank the Lord you're healed. Thank the Lord your sins are remitted, not just covered over, but they're gone. And it's all because of Jesus' Resurrection, And the next verse says, for he that is dead is freed from sin. You're free from sin. Sin has no more dominion over you. Now, if we're going to slip over to uh, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. And this is the profound verse uh, that gets us into the resurrection power that we can be saved, we can be born again, we can be healed, we can be delivered. It's Romans chapter 10, and uh, let's look at verse 9. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you and you shall believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. If you believe that God raised him from the dead... For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto. So, today is a celebration 
of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a day to celebrate Jesus as the Passover lamb. Uh, this is the day for you to take communion, representing uh, the death, burial, and resurrection, the blood of Christ, the body of Christ, and identify with him and his death, burial, and resurrection. So if you want to take time today with your family, uh, later on today, whatever time you have, remind yourself and your family, teach your kids uh, the real reason for Easter. Teach them the real meaning of this celebration that everybody's uh, uh, doing and why we're celebrating. It's, it's not about uh, the bunny. It's not about eggs. In fact, I don't really understand how anybody uh, could celebrate uh, the Easter bunny who lays eggs. Uh, rabbits don't lay eggs. So right there, Satan's attempt to distract us and distort what Easter is all about. Uh, we can counter that just with logic. But take time to explain this to your children. And, and not in a condemning way, but explain it to them that here is the whole purpose of Easter. Here's the whole purpose of the Passover. Here's what the resurrection is all about. And that's what we're celebrating today. Now, don't go away because I want to have a prayer with you. And uh, if you have never asked Jesus to come into your heart, if you've never been born again, we just read where uh, all you have to do is believe in your heart that Jesus was crucified, buried, and raised. Confess it with your mouth and believe it in your heart and it will become a reality to you. So stay tuned. Take a pause. Don't go away. I'll be right back to pray with you in just a minute. Again, it's not about the bunny. Jesus' triumph over death is the true significance of Easter. The path that he took to the cross was for you. The beatings he endured was for you. The torture and mockings before his crucifixion was all for you. The nails that were used to crucify Jesus were most likely seven to nine inches long and made of square iron metal. They were driven into his hands and his feet. What an incredible price he paid for our sins. And it was all done for you and me so we could have eternal life. All he asks is that we believe in him, that we believe what he did and why he did it. Jesus' resurrection rebuked any thought that he was just a teacher. It confirmed with undeniable proof that he is the Son of God. He overcame death so you could have a chance at life, not just any life, but eternal life. Now you know the story and the power of the resurrection. Wherever you're watching today, would you just close your eyes and pray with me and just ask Jesus to come into your heart? Maybe you've never done this or maybe you need to renew uh, your commitment and your faith in Christ. Just pray after me. Just say, Jesus, I believe you're the Christ. I believe God raised you from the dead. I'm asking you to come into my heart and save me now. Thank you, Jesus, for your death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. If you prayed that with me and you asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, I'd like to send you this little booklet called God Loves You. It will help answer questions you may have as you get started in your Christian life or you're reviewing your life with Christ. Just go online at vtntv.com and you can download the book for free. That's vtntv.com or you can call one 888 one 641 3375 and tell the operator that you prayed with Pastor Caldwell and you'd like that book and we'll send it to you free of charge. This is our gift to you today. And always remember, we're here to pray for you and stand in agreement with you. If you have a prayer request or a praise report, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Email prayer at vtntv.com or call one 888 641 3375. 
So let us, let us hear from you. We'd appreciate that. Uh, don't go anywhere. As I mentioned, uh, we'll be right back uh, after this message. So stay tuned and uh, I'll see you in just a minute. Faith, hope, love. But the greatest of these is love. Do you desire to have the love Jesus wants you to have for others? Are you struggling to know what that looks like? Walking in love is essential as a believer in Christ. However, most people struggle with this. Why? Because they think it's about perfecting themselves. It's not. It's about perfecting the love of God within you. Inspired by the popular audio series, Practice Makes Perfect, Perfected Love, Pastor Caldwell's new book, Perfected Love, God's Top Priority, shares practical and real examples from his life. You'll learn how to practice the love of God and apply it to any circumstance. His scriptural instructions and biblical principles will help you understand God's perfected love in you. The book, Perfected Love, God's Top Priority, is available for $15.99 plus shipping. To order your copy, call 1-888-641-3375 or order online at vtntv.com. Be the light with God's perfected love in this dark world. Order your copy today. Perfect love is God's priority. So enjoy the love of God in your life. VTN's on Facebook. You can find us at VTN, your Arkansas Christian Connection. You can also follow me on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell. And be sure to join Jeannie and me every Sunday for VTN Sunday. Uh, and we'll look forward to seeing you. And remember, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If this program has ministered to you, please consider making VTN part of your regular giving. To make a donation or to contact this ministry, write to VTN, P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. You may also call 501-223-2525. Today's program is available to watch on demand. Log on to vtntv.com and click watch. VTN is also on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. You may also order a copy of today's show on DVD by calling 1-888-641-3375. Ask for the offer number on the screen. And join us again next time for VTN Sunday with Happy and Jeannie Caldwell.